What if I told you one of history's most infamous figures, Adolf Hitler, may not have met the end we were taught in history class? A tale of suicide in a bunker, a man and his wife, a world at war. But what if there's more to the story? For decades, historians and theorists alike have wrestled with the enigmatic fate of the man behind the swastika. Official accounts, eyewitness testimonies, they paint one picture. But whispers of elaborate deception, of escape routes and hidden lives, they sketch another. From the depths of Soviet disinformation campaigns to the heights of American investigations, the tale stretches across continents and through the annals of time. It's a narrative woven with threads of controversy and speculation, each strand pulling us deeper into the labyrinth of history. And at the center of it all, a question. What really happened to Adolf Hitler? So, let's dive into the enigma that is Adolf Hitler's fate. First, let's revisit the widely accepted historical account. On a fateful day at the end of April in the year 1945, deep within the fortified walls of the Führer bunker in Berlin, Adolf Hitler, the man who had held the world in a grip of terror, met his end. Alongside him was Eva Braun, his longtime companion and for less than 40 hours his wife. The narrative goes that with the Allied forces closing in and the war all but lost, Hitler chose to die on his own terms. He and Braun reportedly ingested cyanide capsules, with Hitler also shooting himself for good measure. Their bodies were later found by Hitler's valet, Heinz Linge, and his SS adjutant, Otto Gunsche. But what proof do we have that this truly happened? Eyewitness accounts, for one. Linge and Gunsche, along with other bunker inhabitants, provided detailed testimonies of the events. They described the grim discovery of the bodies, the hurried makeshift cremation in a shell crater, and the subsequent burial. Then, there are the dental records. A piece of jawbone held by the Russians since 1945 was confirmed in 2009 to be Hitler's, based on its unique dental work. The dental assistants who worked on Hitler's teeth were captured by the Americans and their descriptions matched the findings. We also have historical documentation. A report by British intelligence released in 2006 revealed that Hitler's death was confirmed by Fritzsche, a senior Nazi official, on a German radio broadcast on May 1, 1945. Yet, despite these pieces of evidence, the world was not inclined to accept Hitler's death at face value. In the aftermath of the war, with its chaos and confusion, rumors began to spread. Was Hitler really dead, or had he managed to cheat death and escape justice? This is the official narrative, but doubt was soon to be cast. Enter the Soviet Union, led by Joseph Stalin, who had a different story to tell. As World War II drew to a close, the Soviet Union dramatically entered Berlin, laying claim to the Führer bunker where Hitler allegedly ended his life. However, Stalin had his own narrative to spin. The Soviet leader initiated a disinformation campaign that would cast a long shadow of doubt over Hitler's death, fueling speculation and conspiracy theories for decades to come. In the aftermath of the war, the Soviets kept a tight lid on the details of Hitler's demise. It wasn't until a press conference held in June 1945 that Marshal Georgi Zhukov, the highest-ranking Soviet military officer, publicly addressed the matter. Zhukov stated, rather cryptically, that the Soviets had been unable to locate Hitler's body. This statement, vague and unconfirmed, was a game-changer. It suggested that Hitler might have escaped, a narrative that the Soviets found useful in the post-war landscape. This version of events served as a tool to destabilize their adversaries, notably the Western Allies, by insinuating that they might be harboring the fugitive dictator. The Soviets continued to stoke these rumors, even going as far as to suggest that Hitler might be hiding in Spain or Argentina, under the protection of sympathetic regimes. Stalin himself allegedly told U.S. President Harry Truman at the Potsdam Conference that he believed Hitler had escaped. This disinformation campaign was remarkably effective. It succeeded in sowing doubt and confusion, casting a cloud of uncertainty over Hitler's fate and stimulating an endless stream of conspiracy theories. This misinformation, and the resulting speculation, would lead to numerous post-war investigations as various agencies and individuals sought to uncover the truth about Hitler's fate. The Soviet narrative of Hitler's escape was not just a story, it was a strategic move in the complex game of post-war politics. It was a tale spun to stir up uncertainty and suspicion among the Allies, and to keep the specter of Hitler alive and menacing in the public imagination. This narrative gained traction and led to several post-war investigations. The U.S. wasn't immune to the allure of these theories and launched their own investigations. 
In the aftermath of World War II, both the FBI and CIA found themselves drawn into the web of speculation surrounding Hitler's fate. The claims they investigated were often as intriguing as they were dubious. One such claim came from Philip Citroen, a former SS soldier turned businessman. Citroen alleged that Hitler had survived the war and was living incognito in South America. He even produced a photograph in 1954, purportedly showing himself with a man he claimed to be Hitler. The photograph, however, was far from definitive proof. The man in question bore a resemblance to Hitler, but it was not irrefutable evidence of his survival. The CIA and FBI followed the leads they had, but the trail was often cold and the evidence circumstantial at best. Their investigations took them across continents and through a labyrinth of hearsay and conjecture. The claims they investigated ranged from the plausible to the outlandish, with some alleging that Hitler had not only survived, but had also undergone plastic surgery to alter his appearance. Despite the extensive investigations, the agencies found no concrete evidence to support the rumors of Hitler's survival. While some documents pointed towards possible sightings, none provided definitive proof. Much of the information was based on second- or third-hand accounts, often from individuals seeking attention or hoping to cash in on the sensationalism surrounding Hitler's fate. The investigations, while thorough, were met with skepticism. Critics argued that the agencies were chasing shadows, drawn into a quagmire of disinformation and conspiracy theories. The lack of concrete evidence was a significant sticking point, leading many to dismiss the investigations as a wild goose chase. However, the investigations did serve a purpose. They highlighted the power of rumor and speculation in shaping public perception. They also underscored the difficulties inherent in proving or disproving such extraordinary claims. While these investigations were inconclusive, they fueled the fire for further speculation. Despite their skepticism, the FBI and CIA's investigations added another layer to the mystery surrounding Hitler's fate, a mystery that continues to captivate and intrigue us to this day. In 2011, a new theory emerged, known as the Grey Wolf Theory. This startling proposition was put forth by Simon Dunstan and Gerard Williams in their book, aptly titled, Grey Wolf, The Escape of Adolf Hitler. According to these authors, Hitler didn't die in the bunker in Berlin, but rather, fled to Argentina, along with Eva Braun and other high-ranking Nazis. Now how did they manage such an audacious escape, you ask? Dunstan and Williams proposed that this was made possible through the help of Juan Perón, the Argentine president at the time. Perón, they allege, was sympathetic to the Nazi cause and provided sanctuary to Hitler and his entourage. The theory suggests that Perón wasn't just offering a safe haven out of the goodness of his heart, but was also heavily influenced by the allure of Nazi loot. Picture this, a treasure trove of Nazi wealth, accumulated through years of looting and pillaging during the Second World War, being used to fund a daring escape plan. This wealth, the theory suggests, was used to grease the wheels, ensuring their safe passage to Argentina. Once there, Hitler and his companions supposedly lived out the rest of their days in peace under the protection of Perón's regime. The Grey Wolf theory paints an intriguing picture, one that could be straight out of a Hollywood thriller, it's a fascinating tale of deceit, escape, and survival. But, as with any good story, the question remains, is it true? The answer to that is a bit more complicated. While the Grey Wolf theory is certainly dramatic, it's important to remember that it's just that, a theory, and a controversial one at that. Despite the claims made by Dunstan and Williams, there is little concrete evidence to back up their assertions. For instance, there are no credible eyewitness testimonies or documents that definitively prove Hitler's presence in Argentina post-1945. The evidence presented is largely circumstantial, relying on hearsay and conjecture rather than hard facts. Additionally, the theory fails to provide a satisfying explanation for why, if Hitler did indeed escape to Argentina, he would choose to live out the rest of his life in hiding rather than attempting to rebuild the Third Reich. Moreover, the Grey Wolf theory has been widely criticized by historians and experts. They argue that it's based on flimsy evidence and wild speculation rather than solid historical research. They point out that the theory conveniently ignores the substantial body of evidence supporting the official account of Hitler's death, including eyewitness testimonies, dental records, and other historical documents. So, while the Grey Wolf theory certainly makes for an interesting narrative, it's important to approach it with a healthy dose of skepticism. Conspiracy theories can be exciting and tantalizing, but they can also cloud our understanding of history if we're not careful. 
As intriguing as this theory is, it has been widely criticized and dismissed. So, as we delve deeper into the mystery of Hitler's fate, let's remember to keep our critical thinking hats on, shall we? Many historians have been critical of theories suggesting Hitler's escape. The Grey Wolf theory, for instance, has faced a good deal of scrutiny. While it paints an intriguing picture of Hitler and his associates fleeing to Argentina, the theory often relies heavily on circumstantial evidence and hearsay, leaving much room for skepticism. Take for instance the claim that Juan Perón, the then Argentine president, provided support for these fleeing Nazis. While there is evidence of Perón's regime sheltering Nazi war criminals, the leap to Hitler's survival and escape is a bridge too far for many historians. The theory assumes a level of complicity and silence from numerous governments, organizations, and individuals that seems implausible on such a grand scale. Moreover, the Grey Wolf theory and similar claims often lack the necessary concrete evidence to substantiate them. For instance, there are no verified photographs, documents, or physical evidence that convincingly prove Hitler survived past 1945. The theory also discounts the testimonies of those present in the bunker during Hitler's final days, not to mention the forensic evidence, such as dental records which support the official account of Hitler's suicide. Criticism also extends to the methodology employed in these theories. They often cherry-pick pieces of information that suit their narrative, while dismissing or downplaying contrary evidence. This approach is at odds with the rigorous standards of historical research, which demand a balanced and comprehensive evaluation of available evidence. Furthermore, these theories often fail to address one key question. Why would Hitler, a man with an enormous ego and a desire for a grand legacy, live out his days in quiet obscurity. This seems to be a contradiction to everything we know about the man and his character. In conclusion, while these theories are certainly compelling and feed our fascination with the unknown, they often lack the rigorous evidence and plausibility to be accepted by the historical community. Yet, despite the skepticism, the allure of these theories persists. After all, mystery has a way of captivating our collective imagination. The History Channel even dedicated an entire series to exploring these claims. The series, aptly titled, Hunting Hitler, dives into the murky waters of conspiracy theories that suggest Hitler may have escaped to South America. Each episode is a thrilling journey into the realm of what-ifs, considering the possibility of Hitler's survival and escape. The series takes viewers from the depths of the Führer bunker right to the heart of the Argentinian wilderness, following leads, debunking myths, and leaving no stone unturned. However, it's important to note that the series, like the theories it examines, has been met with considerable skepticism. Many historians and experts maintain that the evidence supporting Hitler's suicide in his bunker is far more substantial than any conspiracy theory. The Hunting Hitler series, while captivating, has arguably added more fuel to the fire of speculation than it has shed light on the truth. But the controversy and speculation surrounding these theories continue. So, why do these theories persist despite the skepticism? Well, one could argue that the sheer magnitude of Hitler's crimes against humanity makes it difficult to accept that his end was as mundane as a suicide in a bunker. The desire for a more fitting demise, perhaps one filled with the fear and suffering he inflicted on millions, fuels these alternative theories. These theories also persist because they offer a tantalizing mystery, a chance to rewrite a significant moment in history, they feed into our collective fascination with conspiracy theories, offering a tantalizing what-if scenario. The controversy they generate is, in itself, a source of intrigue, sparking debate and further research. However, it's crucial to remember that skepticism is the backbone of historical research. It's the tool that helps us separate fact from fiction, evidence from hearsay. While it's fascinating to explore these alternative theories, it's essential to approach them with a discerning eye. The impact of these theories on historical research is significant. They challenge the accepted narrative and force us to question our understanding of the past. However, they also run the risk of muddying the waters, diverting attention from verified facts and leading us down rabbit holes of speculation. As we've seen, the mystery of Hitler's fate is filled with theories and controversies. Yet at the heart of this mystery is a simple, albeit dark truth. One of the most notorious figures in human history met an end as controversial as his life. In conclusion, while the official account of Hitler's death is widely accepted, questions and theories persist. We've journeyed together through a labyrinth of possibilities from the official narrative of suicide in the bunker 
to the cloud of uncertainty cast by the Soviet disinformation campaign. We've delved into post-war American investigations, fueled by claims of Hitler's survival and escape to South America, and explored the provocative Grey Wolf theory, suggesting a covert Nazi exodus to Argentina. Yet as we've seen these alternative theories while intriguing, often lack concrete evidence and are met with skepticism from the historical community. Even the sensational assertions of the Hunting Hitler series have faced widespread doubt. The controversy and speculation surrounding Hitler's fate serve as a stark reminder of the challenges in unearthing the truth amid the rubble of history. The importance of approaching historical mysteries with a critical and discerning eye cannot be overstated. We must be willing to question, to probe, and to challenge the accepted narratives, but also to recognize the limitations of conspiracy and speculation. As we peel back the layers of history, we should always strive to separate fact from fiction, evidence from hearsay. In the end, the enigma of Hitler's fate remains a fascinating puzzle, a potent symbol of the enduring mysteries of history. Remember, in history as in life, not everything is as it seems. And with that, we've reached the end of our exploration into the mystery of Adolf Hitler's fate. What a journey. As we delve into history's enigmatic moments, we encourage you to continue the conversation, share your thoughts, and dive deeper into this topic. There are numerous resources available for further research and reading. Remember, history is a living subject continually evolving with each new discovery. Thanks for joining us on this journey into history's enigmatic moments. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep learning.